Welcome to Energy 154, Unit 4. In this unit, we'll discuss solar energy. So as usual, your first homework question is going to be to calculate the percentage of solar energy um, provides the total United States energy supply. And as you can see, the solar line is yellow, so it's hard to see anyway, and it's very, very small. So it'll be a very small percentage. So before we dig into more details about solar power, we want to talk about where, where does solar power come from and how can we harness it. So solar power obviously comes from the sun, but how does the sun generate power? So the sun actually generates power from a hydrogen fusion reaction. So if you want more information, you can go to this hyperphysics website. But the idea is that two hydrogen atoms come together and produce a helium atom and produce energy at the same time. We'll go over this a little bit more when we talk about nuclear power. So let's talk about some different solar power options. So there's a bunch of different solar power options and some are very small um, and fit on a rooftop like the top middle one and some are very large and it's hard to see the scale of this um, power plant here but um, you can see the mountains in the background. And also, there's uh, a tiny truck right here at the base of um, the tower. So you can see how massive um, the, this, this solar field is. And the same thing down here, there's a, a man standing next to this solar power plant. And this is a bigger solar power plant, um, or this is a smaller solar power plant, but still rather large with some trees. So let's talk about all, what all these pictures sort of mean. So the top left picture is a picture of biomass. So this is a, um, plants that are grown for fuel instead of food. So sometimes this is, uh, the most famous one of these is corn ethanol. I believe this is um, a different um, plant here. This obviously is not corn here. So um, that's the idea, is that biomass that takes the sunlight and converts it into carbohydrates in the plants and then we can use those carbohydrates for fuel, either by burning the plants or converting it into liquid fuels, like ethanol. So thermal, solar thermal is a technology where this is on a typical roof, but basically you just take the sunlight and heat something up. So um, in, in general, this is used mostly for hot water and space heating. So And that's why it's on the top of a roof. So it's used for this home's hot water and space heating. So then we also have what's called solar thermal electrical generation. So if you remember way back when we talked about power plants is the power plants take heat and add it to water to create steam to, gen to run a turbine. And basically we're doing the same thing. These are just like conventional power plants except the heat that we're generating is from the sun instead of from fossil fuels. So in this case, the top case, the heat is reflected off what's called these parabolic mirrors into this tube and this tube contains oil that heats up, and then the oil um, converts water into steam and runs a turbine. Up here, you can see all of these little mirrors are focused on this top point of what's called this, the power tower. And this, this top point gets very hot and converts water to steam and runs a turbine. So these are generally um, only useful or only um, economical to build in the desert. So photovoltaic panels are a little bit different. They don't involve heat at all. And, and these are the, probably the most typical solar panels that you see. They convert sunlight directly into electricity. So if you want to know more about um, this, it's a quantum mechanical process. But there's a pretty good um, information on um, the basic physics at this website. So what are the conversion efficiencies of all these technologies? So if we're just looking for heat, that's probably the best conversion efficiency. So if we're just looking for heat, um, the solar thermal for heating is about 50%. So the photovoltaic panels have a large range depending on um, how much you spend for them, um, from you know 10% and even lower than that sometimes. And the highest are around 40 or 45% in the in the labs, and um, it probably will hit 50% 50 50 soon. Um, the solar thermal power plants, if we go to sunlight to electricity, 
are somewhere in the range of 1.5% efficient. And then if we look at the biomass, um, if we look sunlight to fuel or electricity, these are way worse. These are 0.034% efficient. So um, we'll talk a little bit about the implications of, of that later. But one thing I want to point out first is a note about biofuels. So biofuel efficiency is very hard to get at. And why is it hard to get at? Well, we take some sunlight, and if we go and convert that to carbohydrate in the energy delivered by plants, we go from 100 watts per meter squared to 0.5 watts per meter squared. But the problem is, is that this involves some energy input required for farming and processing of the biofuels. The biggest input is the fertilizer that they use that we make from fossil fuels. So fertilizer is made from natural gas mostly. And um, so that requires some energy input to grow the plants. So your delivered energy is much lower than, um, than just the carbohydrates that are in the plants because we had to use some energy to, to farm the land and to um, fertilize the land. So we get a net energy out. So a lot of times that net energy is much lower than the carbohydrate energy delivered um, by the plants themselves. So this leads to a very low efficiency. It also leads, deals with, leads to some trouble in predicting what, what exactly the efficiency will be. So you'll see lots of varying efficiencies for biomass. I use the one that he, I use for my efficiency, I use the one that McKay used in Without Hot Air. Okay, so now that we sort of know what we can do with solar power. Let's look at the solar power potential of an area. So the first thing we want to look at when we look at the solar power potential of an area is how much sunlight hits that area. And since you guys are doing projects for um, one of the United States, we'll look at the United States map. And these maps, again, are produced by NREL and can be gotten at this website. So the, main, the first thing we want to look at is what this is measuring. This is measuring the kilowatt hours per meter squared per day. And as you can see, so what that means is that this is how much sunlight in kilowatt hours is hitting a meter squared in one day. So what you can see is that the red areas mean that um, high amounts of uh, sunlight hitting an area, and the bluish or purplish areas means low amounts. And it makes sense that Alaska is very blue and that the southwest is very red. And good old Delaware is right in the middle at about 4 kilowatt hours per meter squared per day. So how can we use this? So for your, for your project, what you're going to have to do is from this, calculate the average solar power. So another way to think about the kilowatt hours per meter squared per day is called sun hours. So it's how many hours on average we have bright sunlight a day. That's another way to think about that unit. So how do we go from, let's say, let's pick a number, 6 kilowatt hours per meter squared per day to average watts per meter squared? Because average watts per meter squared is what you're going to need for your project. So if we start with 6 kilowatt hours per meter squared per day, and we know that one day equals 24 hours, and we know 1,000 watts in one kilowatt, we get 250 watts per meter squared. And this calculation is needed for project one, so make sure you know how to do it. The other thing we can use with these kilowatt hours per meter squared per day units is we can make sense of these conversion efficiencies. And how I'm going to have you do that is by answering this homework question. And I'll explain it a little bit here. So I want to provide all of Delaware's energy use with either photovoltaics, and you can use 15% efficient photovoltaics, solar thermal power plants, or biomass power. Assume 4 kilowatt hours per meter squared per day. So that's the sort of the amount for Delaware we went over before. So what area in acres would be needed for each of these three technologies? So basically, what you should end up with is that the least efficient is going to be the highest area. And then what you also want to calculate is what percent is that area um, of, the state, of the state of Delaware would they cover? And Delaware is 1.6 million acres. So that will be on your homework. So take a look at that. So now that we know a little bit about that, let's talk a little bit about solar panel placement. And we'll be doing a lab um, that, that talks about solar panel shading. And, um, but we do want to talk a little bit about um, what's going on here. So what I want you to do is get a feeling for how the sun moves throughout the sky. 
So just like before we did with wind power, I want you to open up the sun's position computable document file, and it's under resources in Blackboard. And I want you to read these questions and, and, and answer them um, to the best of your ability. I also want you to figure out, once you've done that, you should, this should uh, um, help you answer this question. So let me explain what's going on in these pictures. Let's first look at the solar panels in this picture. There's four of them. There's solar panel one, solar panel two, solar panel three, and solar panel four. And as you can see, they're all tilted in different orientations. So solar panel four is tilted completely up and down. Solar panel three is tilted about 45 degrees. Solar panel two is tilted about 90 degrees or perpendicular um, to solar panel four. And then this um, solar panel one is tilted um, 45 degrees in um, the other direction. So, and then the we're facing we're in Delaware in January, and straight ahead the camera is facing south. So what we did is we logged what's called the short circuit current of the solar panels. But all that means is the higher the short circuit current, the higher power we can get out of the solar panels. So that's all you need to know is that it's more sunlight hitting the solar panels. So you can see that there's a green line, a blue line, a purple line, and a red line. So what your goal for homework is, is to figure out which of these lines match up with each, which of these solar panels. And then you also want to think about is if we did this experiment in June instead of January, how do you think this graph would look different? And what, what would change about this graph? So we're also going to take into account not just how the sun moves throughout the sky with solar panels, but how shading can affect it. So this happens with trees or with chimneys or all types of things with, for solar panels. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to do a lab the last day of class. So you'll see how um, real solar engineers go out in the field and calculate shading. So using what you know, what you've done in the homework, what I, I want you to answer this discussion board question. How does the conversion efficiency of solar power technologies affect the amount of land area technology would use? And do you think this would be a factor in your state? 